To get a sloped roof, we'll need to change the height of the two inner posts without changing the height of the outer posts. We can accomplish this by making the inner posts unique. So I'm going to go get the Select tool, click on one of them, then hold the Shift key down and click on the other inner post. Now I can right click on either one of these posts and select Make Unique. So to demonstrate that these two posts are actually unique components, I'm going to edit one of them by double clicking on it, grab the push-pull tool, move up, and you can see both posts are rising. I'll hit the escape key to get out of that, right click, and close component. Before sizing the inner posts, we'll need to determine their height based on the pitch of the roof. SketchUp will do all the math for us. All we need to do is make a guideline at the roof pitch and then stretch the inner timbers to meet it. So I'm going to select the protractor tool. I'm going to hover over the front face of this left outside timber and you'll see that the protractor turns green. And now hold down the shift key to lock it into this plane. Move to the upper left corner, click, and then drag along the red axis, click again, and then move in an upward direction. Now we have a 512 roof pitch, so I'm going to type in 5 colon 12 and press enter. And that establishes the guideline at that pitch. Now with the tape measure tool, we are going to click on the upper left corner of this post, move in an upward direction until we get a blue inference line, and hold down the shift key to lock it in that blue plane. And now we can intersect with the roof pitch guideline and we'll see two guidelines. Now we'll go to the select tool, double click on the inner post, use the push pull tool, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this so that the left edge intersects our two guidelines and click. And then click outside of the component and close component. Now we should have an inner post that's 11 feet. Let's use the tape measure tool to verify that. And we do. So we're going to remove the guidelines by doing Edit, Delete Guides. Now that all the posts are set to their proper height, we can add the three tie beams that hold the bent together. We'll start with the outer tie beam. I'm going to select the Rectangle tool, zoom in on this inner face, click in the upper left corner and drag, and then type in 8, 8, Enter, which gives us an 8 by 8 rectangle. And I'm going to click on the push-pull tool, hover over this new surface, drag it until it snaps on the post, and click. Now, I'm going to go to the Select tool, triple-click on this tie beam, right-click, select Make Component, and name it Outer Tie, and click on Create. Now we'll copy the outer tie beam to the opposite side of the bent. So with the select tool, I'm going to single click on the tie beam, then go to the move copy tool, press control to get into copy mode, and now hover over the bottom right corner and click. And as we drag to the right, you'll see a new copy. Now, once you establish this movement on the red axis, you can hold down the shift key and that will keep it there and we're going to move along the red axis until we reach the outer post and click. Our plan calls for the outer tie beams to be six inches below the top of the outer posts. So with the select tool I'm going to click on one of the tie beams and then hold down the shift key and click on the other. Now we'll get the move tool and on either one of these tie beams on either edge we can click and move in a downward direction. And now I'm going to type in 6, press enter, and the tie beams have moved 6 inches from their original position. So let's verify that. We'll get the tape measure, and we will measure from this point to the top of the post, and it's 6 inches. Next, let's create the center tie beam, but let's use a different approach. First, we're going to use the tape measure to get the distance between these two posts. So the inner tie beam is going to be 10 foot 8. So we're going to create this beam on the slab the way we did a post. So we'll grab the rectangle tool, start adjacent to this inner post, 
and type in 8 comma 8 press enter and now we have our 8 inch by 8 inch square we're going to use the push pull tool move in the upward direction and type in 10 foot 8 and press enter so let's make it into a component next go to the select tool triple click on it right click on it choose make component and this time we're going to name it inner tie now we have to rotate it in place and move it into position. So we're going to grab the rotate tool and we're going to move to the upper left corner of the new timber. Click, move in a downward direction, click again, and now move up until it snaps to horizontal and click a third time. So the tie beam is now horizontal and we will use the move tool grab the upper left corner click move down until it snaps and click again but according to our plan this tie beam is one foot down from the top of the inner posts so we'll do a second move clicking in the upper left corner moving in a downward direction and typing in one foot and pressing enter Let's use the tape measure tool again to verify things. And we'll see we're exactly one foot from the top of the inner posts. Our design uses 4x5 braces that define a 3-4-5 triangle between the posts and beams that they connect. This brace angle is approximately 37 degrees, but SketchUp will figure that out for us. All we need to know are the lengths of the triangle sides. So using the tape measure tool, We'll start on the left side and click on the midpoint of the tie beam and move to the right and then enter a length of 27 inches and press enter. Then we move to the bottom of the tie beam, move in a downward direction along the blue axis and type in 36 and press enter. Now let's use the tape measure to verify that we have 2 foot 3 which is 27 inches and move in downward direction and we have three feet which is 36 inches. Next we're going to use the line tool and position to the intersection of the post and the guide. Click. Move to the intersection of the tie and the guide and click. And now we have a line between those two guidelines. We'll move over to the tape measure tool. Click anywhere on the line and move so that we're hovering over either the post or the tie and then type in 5 and press enter. We now have a guideline 5 inches away from the initial line. So let's go back to the line tool. Click on this intersection and click on that intersection. So we don't have a solid brace yet. We need to fill in two more sides. So if we click here and here and then I'm going to press escape, click on this point, and this point, we have a filled in brace. We can now orbit to the back side, get the push pull tool, click, drag, type in 4, and we have a finished 4x5 brace. But let's get the select tool, triple click on it, select make component, type in brace and then go up to the edit menu delete guides and I'm going to click outside of this component and there's our finished brace. We could follow the same procedure to create the opposite brace but it's much easier to just copy and flip it. So we'll go to the select tool click on the brace then go to the move copy tool press control to get into copy mode and click on the upper right corner of the brace and move the copy into the corner between the tie and the post and click. Now simply right click on this new brace and select flip along components red and SketchUp flips it into position. 